Welcome back to my video. Have you ever wondered why do you think, feel and behave the way you do? What if I told you that you could unlock the mystery of your personality and that it could be found in the way you speak, in the way you construct theories about people around you and about yourself? First, let's define personality. Personality is a set of psychological traits and mechanisms within the individual that are organized and relatively enduring. So they have a sense of consistency over time that influences the way the individual interacts and adapts to new social and physical and mental environments. Psychological traits are characteristics that try to explain the ways people differ from each other. So the Big Five theory, the Myers-Briggs theory, they try to explain how does this person differ from the other person? Personality analysis can be explained from three different levels. There is the human nature level, the basic foundation, which explains the things that are common for all humans. Our need for love, our understanding of emotions, these traits are possessed by everyone or nearly everyone. Second, we have individual and group differences. These are the dimensions of individual differences, which means there are ways of how we are similar to each other, but at the same time, there are ways how we differ from each other. This can be the personality categories like Myers-Briggs, or this can be, let's say, gender. Males are more aggressive on average than females. That's a group difference. Introverts are less sensation-seeking than extroverts. That's a group difference. And the last one, we have individual uniqueness. Using this analysis, we can understand why a specific person likes saying hello to his neighbor. There's a specific reason for an individual to behave in a certain way, which is a combination of multiple factors. On a human nature level, we all need connection. But on a group differences level, females and males search and engage in connection in different ways. On an individual differences level, we see that I, myself, have a specific type or specific way of showing my love or connection with another person. How are personality measures evaluated from a scientific perspective. Reliability, validity and generalizability are the standards for measuring personality. Reliability means consistency over time and it can be measured through, for example, test retest measurements to see that the same thing happens or the same thing stays true over a long period of time. Validity tries to confirm is the test measuring what it's supposed to measure? And generalizability means does this theory or is this measurement true across different situations and different contexts? So remember, these standards are used in personality psychology to measure, to evaluate if the personality measurements are applicable and accurate. What kind of personality theories do we have and what are seen as valid from a scientific perspective? There is three fundamental approaches to measure personalities. First is the lexical approach. 
which begins with the hypothesis that significant personality traits and individual differences are encoded in our language. This approach tries to understand what kind of sentences or words are used in our language to describe some certain personality traits. If we consider English, for example, we find an abundance of trait adjectives such as arrogant, manipulate. The next kind of approach is the statistical approach, which starts with the assumption that you need to have a large pool of people, a large amount of people to rate themselves into specific things. The most commonly used statistical procedure is factor analysis. There are models like Eusenck's pen, the big five and the hexaco model, which are all based on the statistical approach and specifically using factor analysis. Eusenck's PEN model, PEN in short means extroversion, neurotism, and psychotism. And it has been researched for over 90 years. Five factor model, or the big five, is actually based on this Eusenck's PEN model. The five factor model is a combination between the lexical approach and the statistical approach. To quickly explain what are big five traits, here is a list of the traits and the definitions of those. There is extroversion, agreeableness, conscientiousness, emotional stability or neurotism, and openness to experience. The hexaco model is based on the five factor model and it just adds one extra trait there, which is honesty and humility. What also should be pointed out or worth mentioning, I think, is the Hogan Personality Inventory, the test called HBI. This has been researched over long periods of time and it has high reliability, validity and generalizability. And it is specifically developed for workplace development, such as recruitment processes. This HBI is based on Big Five theory and research has shown that by using this kind of measurement to do recruitment and that finding out people's personality profiles can actually impact on the company's trade and how the company is developing. The third approach that we have not talked yet is the theoretical approach. This means that instead of just searching something and coming to the conclusion based on the data, we start with a hypothesis. We start with a theory, an assumption of how personality is. Freud's theory, Jung's theory, they are all theoretical approaches to personality and they already identify the key dimensions of personality traits. Carl Jung's theory of psychological types is the foundation for MBTI theory. It is also the foundation for John Beebe's eight function model and Linda Barron's interaction styles. MBTI is therefore based on a theoretical approach to personality. And MBTI is in the modern world currently mostly used for team development purposes. Purposes. Due to it has really specific, sharp, easily explained categories, it doesn't compare your traits to other people and their traits, but rather it tries to provide you explanation that you can utilize for team management or self-development or relationships whatever. The common misconception is that Myers-Briggs theory is not research or it does not have any scientific backup. It actually does. Do your research before expecting that. But the most agreed personality test is still the big five theory due to its large amount of data and long periods of research. It's been researched for almost 100 years and therefore it gets the most support from the researchers. So do we actually have personalities 
Are they scientifically valid? The short answer is yes. Big Five Theory and Myers-Briggs both have scientific data. It has also been widely researched that personality traits stay stable and consistent over time. Although environments and your genetic factors will influence your personality type, your personality traits, but there is one general rule to keep in mind. The weaker the influence of your surroundings and environment, the more likely you are to manifest your personality traits. The more trauma a person holds in them and the more their environment controls them, the less the personality can actually manifest. Thank you for watching. If you found this insightful, please don't forget to like and subscribe. What specific personality theories are you interested about? Please comment below and let me know. See you in the next video.